welcome back this is how your test execution page looks like these five step process ensure your proper test execution so in this video we're going to focus on test environment validation so if you recall the test environment which we have created for our project is something like this we have a web server running ubuntu 12.4 and apache 2.x and php 5.5 and a oci client that can connect to a oracle database server and we have a oracle database so that is running here so and we have installed a software called moodle and this is our system under test so essentially what our goal here is before we actually run the test to report we need to ensure that these test environments are proper these test environments are as per the specification so so basically what I'm going to do here I'm going to do some of the key mistakes or key checkpoints that you should be uh, you should be doing when you should be considering when you want to do the test environment validation so what are the key checkpoints so that is what is we are going to discuss here all right for example if this is your how your production system is going to look like then your test system should be exactly the same that means if we are using two cpu web server and a four cpu database server just ensure that whenever you are going to run your performance test the test environment also should be two cpu and four cpu in the test you may run with a with a four cpu web server and a four cpu database server so in that case whatever results you are going to get may not be may not be similar kind of things you find whenever you are running on your production system this is a very important thing and a lot of people do a lot of mistake in that is that their test environment is not exact replica of production environment okay so that is the key checkpoint first so ensure that your test environment should be replica of production environment I mean that same hardware storage network and also same version of software same version of software so that means if you are using oracle 11.2.0.2.2.7 version 7, then ensure that whenever you are running your test environment the test environment should be also exactly the same version of database server and also we do a lot of tuning and, and configuration changes and so on so essentially we also ensure that the same system parameter will be used in your test environment same system parameter so this is an issue a lot of people do a lot of mistake in the sense that their test environment is not exactly equal to the production environment right then number two point is that whenever we are doing this performance testing what we need to ensure that what whatever our load testing tool our load testing tool should also collect resources of this two server so that means one thing that we are going to get the response time how much it takes to get the transaction done and also we need to we need to understand what are the key performance indicator okay or that is called as kpi and let's say the key performance indicators are cpu utilization of the database server or memory utilization of database server all right so we need to ensure that we are monitoring and our load testing tool is able to monitor this monitor and collect dot kpi from these servers all right so that is what the next thing that ensure that key performance indicators are collected okay collected from the system under test okay sometimes to collect the key performance indicator you might require some special permission 
uh, especially on Windows machine if your if your server is a Windows machine then whatever the user that is going to collect the statistics must have an access to to, to collect the or performance indicator from that Windows server. So essentially what you, you ensure that special accounts are created to collect server stats like CPU, memory and so on. And also sometimes if it is an Oracle database or a database system we also collect other different statistics like for example in database we collect the AWR report or stats pack report. Okay, and those reports are going to give us an idea how your database is behaving under load. So ensure that we collect all those KPI and in fact the system is configured so that these statistics can be collected. Another major problem that I have seen that whenever this test, whenever the tests are running, there may be some antivirus software or some cron jobs are running on the test system okay so basically then that is going to skew up your results so turn off unnecessary resource consuming software like antivirus like some unix cron jobs and so on then another important thing that i seen that like in the system this is a system under test and you have multiple load generator clients okay so let's say these machines we call them as a load generator okay so essentially ensure that all your load generators are not saturated that means whenever you are, st you are starting some load it also consumes CPU in the load generator so what happens if the CPU consumption of this load generators are 100 percentage but your web server or database server are not saturated. So in that case what you need to ensure that you need to provision enough number of load generator so that load generator would never be a bottleneck in the test. Right? So, so you know a lot of time what people do they run with a zero delay like you know whenever they are they're, they're simulating the, the load you know basically the, the load simulation is similar to the user interaction the way that a user, a normal user goes to a website and then stay for some time and then click something and then do something and then wait for some time and that is the normal behavior. But sometimes what I have seen that people write scripts without any delay, without any think time. All right. So ensure that your, your load drivers are running properly okay running properly so one thing is that they are not never be a bottleneck either from CPU or memory and ensure that there is enough think time or enough delay in the script okay appropriate delay Another problem that, that people do that in a cluster environment, so here's a, here's a scenario. We have three web servers and those and three web servers are, you know, there is a load balancer in front of those three web server and then these three web server connected to a database server. And let's say here we have the client one and we are simulating a, a user load. And now let's say first time whenever the user one comes from the client one, it goes to this load balancer and goes to this web server. Whenever user two, which is also coming from this client one, goes to the load balancer, then what it does is that it is going to route the request to the same web server because this IP address is constant. Okay, And this is actually not the right way of load testing. Essentially, what we are trying to, what is supposed to do is that whenever the next user comes, you should have given it to the next web server that is available. And this is what is the use of cluster. All right. So, and then if those things are happening, that is called IP switching. But in case of a, uh, of, of a test environment, since the IP address is same, therefore, whatever number of users we are simulating from the same machine will always go to the same web server. So ensure 
that in your case IP switching is happening okay and there are a couple of parameters that you can change and also you can ensure your script so that those IP switching will will happen all right so these are the some kind of best practices to validate your test environment so thank you so much and see you in next video where we're going to discuss about test validation